I'd like to call the meeting of the Local Agency Formation Commission together. We're meeting tonight on uh, Wednesday, April 25th, 5 p.m. in the Board of Supervisors Chambers. Roll call, please. Commissioner Fowler. Present. Commissioner Scribner. Here. Commissioner Sanders. Commissioner Rivera. Here. Commissioner Mello. Here. Commissioner McKibben. Here. Commissioner McGuire. Here. Commissioner Couch. Here. Commissioner Garola. Present. Thank you. I'd like to ask Commissioner Couch to lead us in the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Number three, approval of the minutes of the March 28th meeting. And I found several minor mistakes. Commissioner Rivera actually did it all. He dropped the A from his name. Sorry. <laughs> but they have been corrected on the copy in the office. So. Move approval with the uh, aforementioned corrections. Second. Okay, we have a, a motion by Commissioner Couch, a second by Commissioner McGuire. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on this agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. Okay, not seeing anyone jump up and run to the mic. Five, notice public hearings. A, Kern LAFCO 2018-2019 final budget. Mr. Knox. Thank you. The 2018-2019 final right. budget. Hold on. Oh, let's do that one. Is that better? <laughs> Excellent. I'm South Staff, not North Staff. 2018-2019 uh, final budget. The budget before you is the same as the preliminary budget presented to you at the last meeting. The budget has been noticed and sent to all the county, the cities, and special districts and relevant parties as required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act. No comments have been received. The budget changes from the previous year are pointed out in your agenda packet. I went over them at the last meeting. I'm not going to go over them again today. Uh, but just because there are no significant changes in the budget, nor any changes from the preliminary budget, doesn't mean that I'm not looking at, the, at this with a critical eye. One of the areas I focused on was the health reimbursement accounts. Full-time LAFCO employees are eligible to participate in a health reimbursement account. Whatever isn't paid by insurance, employees can turn in and be reimbursed for 80% of the cost. This is account, accounted for in the line item in the budget each year. Fortunately, myself and our two full-time staff employees have been relatively in good health this last year, and the balance available to each employee has been accumulating. While not particularly large now, the accumulation caught my attention as a possible future threat to the budget if one or more employees had to use a significant amount in a given year. While it's not a high number now, I c it can grow over time. My initial thought was to look at the possibility of treating this like we have sick and vacation accrual and setting it aside each year. I took this idea to our accountant, Daniel Gutierrez, for a recommendation. And he gave several, but I'm gonna point out two of them. Uh, the HRA, uh, although an employee benefit, is not vested, but rather a notional amount, meaning that the employer always will own any accumulation in each of the employee's accounts. It's not until a claim is filed that employee will be entitled to such account amounts. So this is owned by the commission not vested with the individual employees. And that holds true in the last, in the other example. If we set aside a fund to hold accumulated funds in HRA, we run the risk of creating a precedent for unfunded liability, similar to a pension. 
which carries its own set of fiduciary responsibilities and can be put the commission and executive officer, officer at risk for any violations. Currently, the only unfunded liability we, we have is the pension, which PERS is a fiduciary and they hold and maintain the funds. So it makes sense to me from his rationale that we do not put this in a separate account. We keep it right where it is. Uh, that means in, pre in future years, if that accumulation grows, we're gonna have to grow that amount in the budget, line item budget each year, but what's not get spent gets sent back and that's not, not part of the next year what is billed to the county, cities, and special districts. Um, so while it looks like a big number in our budget, it, it's, it's not necessarily a big number of what we're spending. Um, so I wanted to make sure you, everyone understood that and that we had taken a look at that and want to make sure that's not a problem in the future. So with that, um, my recommendation is to approve the 2018-2019 final budget. I could have yelled loud enough, but I'll be nice and use the mic. Is there anyone in the public that would like to address the uh, budget? Okay, commissioners. Any comments? I'll make a motion we approve. Second, with my encouragement that you staffers and Blair take your vitamins. <laughs> okay, that was a motion by Chuck McGuire, a second by Commissioner Fowler. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, notice public hearing item B. Appointment restricted public commission member. Now, as I understand, the only commission, I mean, the only application you got in was from Commissioner Barbara Fowler. That is, that is correct. So, at this point, are we going to just reappoint? But it's a special restricted member, so it's only the cities, no, the county supervisors and the special districts that get to take care of that. That is correct. According to um, our bylaws, when this position was put together, uh, only uh, the county, two county supervisors and two special district members get to vote on this, on this appointment. Okay. Okay. Commissioner Fowler, would you like to make a statement? Actually, I, I'm looking forward to being reappointed. I was an alternate for a number of years and have served for four years, and I think I'm doing a good job, and I'd like you to vote for me, <laughs> uh, River, and all the rest of you. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm teasing you about your name now, River. <laughs> Okay, then we I'll, on I'll move uh, move her. I guess it would be move her nomination. Second. Okay, Ch we, Chairman, we, you need public comment. Okay, is there anyone in the public sitting out there that would like to make a comment on Commissioner Fowler becoming re retaining her commission seat or not retaining it? No comment. And we have to have a quorum, which we have. We have three of the four here, correct? Correct. Okay. So we have a motion by Commissioner Scribner, a second by Commissioner Couch to reseat Commissioner Fowler as a restricted member. Those who can cast your vote, please do so. Motion approved, all ayes. Congratulations, Commissioner Fowler. Now, yes. Mr. Blair, what do we do with an alternate since only one person applied? Yes, I took a look at that and the way our bylaws read, uh, the, the current sitting 
alternate continues as alternate, which would be Jeff Foy. Uh, what we can do, though, is leave the uh, application process open if somebody else wants to apply. Uh, they're more than welcome to do that, and we can bring that before the commission if we if we get a application. Okay. Any comments from the commissioners? Okay, then that's how we'll leave it. Okay. Okay, public project review. I do not see any here, so commission items. Commissioners? Well, I have. Jose, tonight is Commissioner Garola's last time with us, and I have a plaque in appreciation of your service and hard work as Commissioner on Lasso. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I teased Jose all along and told him he was my grandson. So I lose a grandson tonight. Okay, number eight, general business. Approval of claims list number 1804. Move approval. Second. Did I get that right? Commissioner Couch and Commissioner McGuire. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Couch, second by Commissioner McGuire. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. B, adopt resolution confirming the results of the protest hearing for 1718 Greenfield County Water District, annexation number 42. Mr. Blair? Yes, this commission approved the annexation of Greenfield County Water District at the March meeting, contingent on the results of the scheduled protest hearing. Notes were published per Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act and a protest hearing was held at the current LAFCO office on Monday, April 23rd, from at uh, 11 a.m. As, as expected, no one showed. Uh, there were no protests filed either in person or through mail, uh, so therefore the annexation can move forward and we can continue with the completion process. So we need a vote to approve the... Move approval? Yes. Second. Commissioner Couch was the second. Where did the first come from? Thank you. My, my hearing isn't the best. My neck's worse. Okay, so we have a motion by Commissioner Scrivener, second by Commissioner Couch. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, update, Special District Commissioner ap appointment. Yes, Mr. Blair. Yes. Notices were sent to each eligible independent special district, and the deadline brought us three nominations. They are Karen Sanders from East Kern Resource Conservation District, Russell Williford from Rosamond Community Service District, and Jonathan Hall from the Tehachapi Cummings County Water District. A ballot has been sent to each eligible district with a 30-day deadline to return to LAFCO. The deadline is May 4th, so we got about 10 days left. Uh, to date, we have received about two-thirds of the votes necessary for us to have a quorum, which is pretty good, but uh, we gotta keep pushing to get those. So if you know any special districts that haven't turned in their ballots, I encourage them to do so. We've had a problem with that in the past. Um, uh, when, we have reached, when we've reached our quorum, I. Uh, get together with the, the Kern County Special District Association and the California Special District Association and we count the ballots. So I don't get to do it all by myself, I have to have somebody watching me. So we make sure that it's all up and up. Uh, re results of the appointment will, will be provided at the next commission meeting. Or if I don't get a quorum, uh, I have the ability to extend for an another 30 days. I don't wanna do that, um, but if I have to, I will. So. Uh, I should also point out that we had a question on the ballot this time that allows special districts to participate in the appointment process electronically through email. Each ballot currently has to be sent by certified mail, which is, is expensive 
Uh, we also sent a self-addressed stamped envelope so we know who it, comes, who it came from. Uh, and it's time consuming and expensive. So by doing it electronically, we can save some money and get this done hopefully quicker and easier for the special districts as well. Uh, and that's what I have on, on that one. I'll have the results for you hopefully at the next meeting. Thank you. And the last item, general business D, executive officer miscellaneous items. Yes, sir. I have a couple today. Um, two weeks ago, uh, Gianna and I attended the Cal uh, LAFCO workshop in San Rafael, another excellent meeting put on by Cal LAFCO. Uh, I was going to inform you a little bit about uh, the public notifi notification requirements, mostly our website. Found that we, we do a pretty good job. We have, we, we're in compliance with the Brown Act, Public Records Act, budgets, and all current notices are on our site but there are some items missing. Missing, For instance, we're supposed to list enterprise systems. I didn't know what an enterprise system was. Had to look it up. Uh, means that we have to list the specific software we use in the office, like Microsoft Office, Adobe, Esri, GIS, those kind of uh, softwares. Apparently we have to do that. So we're gonna have that on our website here shortly. Uh, some of our policies and procedures are, are included on the website, but we can do better. The state is looking for more closely at how transparent public agencies are with information, and the websites are a big part of that. Our web page is currently part of the county website, which has been adequate so far, but there's a limit to how much we can put on the site. For instance, we cannot link to a video of our commission meetings, even though we have those, those files available. Uh, at some point, we may be looking at needing our own site. We're not ready yet, but possibly sometime in the future. Last meeting, I brought to you uh, that there was two support letters that I wrote on behalf of, of our current LAFCO, uh, of legislation that's being sponsored by Cal LAFCO at the state legislature. I also mentioned that according to our bylaws, I'm supposed to bring it to you in the next meeting, but I forgot to put it on the agenda. <laughs> so I can't bring it to you today, so I'll have it on the next agenda. Uh, there was nothing uh, controversial about the two bills. Um, both the chair and vice chair uh, saw them and reviewed them before I had approval to, to send them to the appropriate committees and, and le legislative staff in Sacramento. So my apologies uh, for not getting that to you today. Recently, I went looking for Mr. Schroeder's con contract. I couldn't find it. It's not in our files where it should be. I also asked Mr. Schroeder uh, if he had a copy, and he doesn't have one either. Even if we had a contract, it would What's be... What's he doing here? <laughs> He's still billing us. We're sure of that. Uh, even if we had a contract, it would likely be... 28 years old, and it's time that we, we, we take another look at that and get a new contract put together. So Tom and I are, are going to be working on that. Uh, I could, I very likely might take it, a copy of that to Joe Hughes to, re, to review, who's our alternate attorney, just to make sure we had another set of eyes, legal eyes, looking at it, since, you know, we don't want him to conflict himself in his own contract uh, writing. So working on that. We're also uh, going to be reaching out to cities soon to do their sphere of influence review, uh, especially those who do not have a current, uh, who do not have a cur current municipal service review. Uh, in some cases, we may go back to cities with MSRs for, an up for updated information as uh, they're bringing annexations to us. Uh, we have noticed lately that when we complete documents, we send them to the Board of Equalization for their approval before the completion is, is, comes back to us. Uh, several of them have been slow coming back to us, so we're now reaching back out to them, making sure they have all the information they need to get those done. Some are a couple months old, and it's beyond time that they had those done. Board of Equalization has had significant changes in their operations the last year or so. The legislature changed uh, a lot of what their powers are, so that may have an effect, but we want to make sure that 
all our hard work at getting things done quickly isn't stifled because moral equalization either doesn't have the documents they need or someone's just not staying on top of them to get it done. So we're doing that. Uh, with that, our next meeting is Wednesday, May 23rd, right here uh, in the Board of Supervisors Chambers. And uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you for the information. And I think we can call it a night. Oh, no, hey, we can't. Commissioner Carolla has something he'd like to add. Yes, I'll be brief. I just want to thank uh, Mr. Knox. Uh, Rebecca wasn't here, uh, LAFCO staff and the commission uh, for uh, the past four years. Uh, we didn't see a lot of uh, controversial items, um, but uh, I sure learned a lot. And it, I'm going to be able to take a lot of this back to Arvin uh, as we uh, may or will have uh, business before this commission uh, relatively soon. And so I appreciate your your uh, wisdom, your kindness, and your friendship, and uh, best of luck, and then, uh, I'm sure I'll be back. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I call the meeting to a close. Mm -hmm.